everyone and welcome to today's video. My name's Amy if you're new here and today I'm going to do a video about spray tans and just in general tanning and how to sort of make your tan last longer, how to prepare for a tan and how to care for your tan afterwards to make sure you get the longest result. So if you're new here please subscribe. I do videos on beauty and every other subject, just anything that's in my life but I am a certified beauty therapist. This is what I do for a job. So if you want some insider tips on things like waxing and tan and nails and all tips that people may not tell you on how to keep everything lasting long and looking great then subscribe for more and if you'd like to see how to make your spray tans last longer then just keep watching so get comfortable everyone i am sitting currently in my mickey mouse um jumper because that's just how we roll in lockdown um but i thought i'd talk to you first about like sort of how tans work and sort of the science behind um any tanning product really so the main chemical in tan that kind of makes it develop is called dha now dha is a chemical that reacts with the dead uh, the dead skin cells and it reacts with the amino acid in them to make them darker so obviously as it's the dead skin cells when the dead skin cells come off like they normally would then your tan is going to fade so the main sort of every single pre-care after care thing is just trying to make them dead skin cells either less dead skin cells or just make them last a bit longer hence the moisturization and exfoliation and things like that so that is a little bit of the science behind it and that's why you have to let your tan develop for however long it says now the higher the percentage of dha the higher the like the higher the pigment so the darker the tan will be so anywhere from like a 10 percent up is going to give you quite a dark tan um so that's just something to look out for although these aren't sort of things that were like commonly uh, shown on tan bottles and things that you buy and um, if you are getting a spray tan from someone you could ask them the dha of their tan and um, i'll show you mine here um, i'm currently sitting on my floor in my beauty room so this is a 10 percent dha so this will produce quite a dark result i'll put up a picture here of the tan i did on my mum now my mum my mum is someone that tans quite easily um sort of she'll go out in the tan in the sun and she'll be tanned so she's got a slightly darker skin tone anyway even though she is just white and british so shouldn't be super tanned she is um so she can just about get away with the 10 percent. but anyone lighter than my mum even me probably would have to go a bit lighter potentially an eight or even if you're lighter than that um a six so that's kind of a guideline and if you're um person who's giving you a spray tan if it is spray tan you're going for should be able to tell you what their dkha of their tan is because that's normally readily available like information so before a tan you want to patch test yourself i know we all probably don't do this as much as we should but you should patch test yourself because some people are allergic to dha or other components that could be in a tan so always make sure you get your um, patch test before or if you're doing it on yourself you might want to try a little area first if it's a new brand just to check that you're not allergic to any of their ingredients but before the well the night before then so you want to hair removal either the night or the day before or the day before that if you're getting waxing maybe the day before that just because that can sometimes open up your pores a little bit more you might get a little bit sore after a wax um so you want to remove all hair just because that saves you from having to do it when you are getting your when you've got your tan on so say if you're a regular shaver um you may have to shave after your tan's been done um which obviously then it just means that you're going to be taking off that top layer of your skin so that might affect it so before a tan for the best 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 results you'll want to have a wax or do a wax at home however you're comfortable and that'll just ensure that not only the hair is removed that also removes the top layer of your skin so it's great for exfoliation which is the other thing you should do so the night before you should always 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 exfoliate this is like the key like should have like blinkers like this is like the most important thing is exfoliate before your tan now as i said it will grip onto the dead skin but if you exfoliate um it's gonna go more into the healthier skin underneath um, and that just means that's gonna take longer before that healthy skin that you've that you've left on your skin is gonna then become a dead skin cell and fall off which therefore your tan would fall off too so make sure you exfoliate it also means you can get a nice even patch um most places um who are getting a spray tan will moisturize sort of your dry areas like um, your elbows your knees your feet because that grips tan on um so most places will do that but just make sure you're exfoliating and regularly moisturizing however not of the day of the appointment um so on the morning off you kind of want to leave your skin there if you can go without deodorant then that's great although they can wipe it off for you when you get there 
the that can just sometimes react with a tan. So really, you want to just leave your skin as bare as possible. You don't really want to do anything on the day. Any moisturizers will act as a barrier. They will apply the moisturizer in them key areas just to make sure there's no oils on your skin. You also want to have your face makeup removed um, and just be as bare as possible um, because that just means there's going to be no barrier in the way of the tan hitting your skin. Obviously, if you've got a moisturizer on there, then when the moisturizer wipes off, your tan might wipe off too. So that's another really key thing to remember also if you don't want to use their disposable underwear which i normally offer you when you're spray tanning then you can wear like a little thong but maybe make sure it's something you're not too bothered about because it may get a bit of tan on the same if you're tanning at home you wouldn't probably wear your best victoria's secret knickers to do your tanning in it'll probably be you know, like me normally like an olaf or like a or like a captain america knicker that's prime however you've got to think about tan lines so Think about the smaller the knicker, the less the smaller your tan lines, which is obviously great. But also, if you're getting a spray tan or you're doing a tan yourself, you can tan naked, which a lot of people don't know. Obviously, ask your therapist before if you are getting a spray tan, like whether she's comfortable with that. But most will say, yep, yeah, that's fine. We do intimate waxes. Most of us, we're happy for you to stand naked and get your spray tan, and that means no tan lines. However, I do quite like a tan line. I think it's really great to see how well the tan's gone on because I think sometimes when you're completely tanned um, you might not notice it and when it's fading um, you might not notice that you've still got quite a good tan whereas obviously with your tan line it's a good indicator and um, most places I get you to remove your bra and just leave your knickers on or wear their disposable knickers they'll also then normally get you to wear a hairnet just to protect your hair um, and that's kind of the process if you're getting a spray tan you've never had one done before um, it's quite cold and it might be a bit tickly but that's the only sensations you should be feeling um, apart from that it's just kind of follow the instructions of what kind of positions you need to be in so you might need to have your arms up and you might need to have your um, legs sort of to the side and um, but they'll tell you exactly how to be so don't be nervous about that if you're going for your first spray tan after lockdown which to be fair I think I might just to feel a bit more human um, so after your tan so this is again if you're tanning from home or if you're getting a spray tan or anything like that you want to wear baggy clothes that don't have anything really tight on your skin um, even something like this where this band is quite tight on my um, cuffs that probably wouldn't be a good thing because it just means this might abrase off some of the tan and um, so you want to make sure you're wearing as loose clothing as possible um, I think t-shirt dresses are really great for this uh, or like jumper dresses if it's cooler um a jumpsuit like if you've got quite a stretchy sort of non-banded jumpsuit that's really good um there's loads of things i mean to be fair if you're comfortable um go get it in your pajamas if your pajamas are loose and um, so there's lots of different options but loose clothing until you wash it off now obviously every tan will be different most tan, like spray tan courses will tell you 12 hours or the next day um so that's normally what i recommend to clients um is just wait 12 hours or shower off the next morning which is normally the easiest thing to do just shower off in the morning so on that note when you shower do not scrub. So directly after you've had your spray tan, obviously, as I've said, you need to wear baggy clothes and things like that. But it's also important to try and get your leave your skin as dry as possible. So preferably don't be quiet in the rain. Um, don't do any heavy exercise that will mean you're sweating quite a lot. Just because obviously you want to keep the tan on your skin. You don't want it to wash off. Um, so that's just something else to be aware of. Um, apart from that, you're pretty good to go. Also, you might potentially want to have, obviously, um, dark sheets. So maybe sleep on a towel. Um, there's a great company called Tan tan and co or something i'll leave their instagram up here this isn't sponsored or anything i just really like the idea of it i've not actually got any of their products but i just think it's such a clever idea and a really good gift idea if someone um, loves tan but it's basically a sheet that you put over your sheet and it basically just stops obviously any tan going on your sheets and um, that's just something to be aware of um rub your skin now obviously as you can imagine even with just a loafer and the scrubbing action you'll naturally do to wash yourself that is causing an exfoliation process to happen which might just make your tan a little bit patchy or obviously make it fade faster and um, so for a longevity tan i normally when i've got a spray tan instead of using a loafer will just use either a bar of soap or shower gel in my hands and just wash like that and um, just because obviously my hands are a lot softer it's not going to be sort of taking off the layer um and yeah make sure it's kind of an oil free as well that's really important 
oils break down pigments so the sort of less oils you put on your skin will be the best and then after you've got out of the shower instead of rubbing dry again you don't want to sort of any rubbing motions just pat yourself dry or even what i normally do is when i get out of the shower i'll sort of just sit in my towel put on a youtube video and dry a bit more naturally sort of pat down any major drips because you don't really want drips just pat down and then just normally i wait to dry naturally and i'll just sit there for 15 to 20 minutes obviously if that's not what you can do then that's fine just pack yourself dry and you'll be cool but um i quite like doing that and i feel like it just kind of leaves me another like, sort of 10 minutes just to be zoned out and just be chilled so that's a super good bit of advice and then literally moisturize every second of the day so that's not true moisturize when you get out of the shower moisturize at the end of the day and if you've got particularly dry skin maybe try and moisturize in the middle of the day too obviously we're just trying to keep them dead skin cells from falling off your skin so the more you moisturize the less you exfoliate the more time these dead skin cells which have reacted with the dha are going to be sitting there looking all tanned and pretty so make sure you're doing that um protect pay particular air time and effort to the areas that are naturally dry again knees elbows hands um for me anyway um there's certain areas where your tan will obviously face fade faster like your face we're obviously we're probably washing our face more often than not um our hands as well especially at the moment we're washing our hands so much more than we're washing sort of the red of our body um so don't worry if the tan fades faster on these times that's completely normal just moisturize as much as possible um just to keep your skin nice and smooth and um, if you can try and avoid shaving and things like that just because obviously that will be taking the top layer of your skin off um obviously not in a scary way that is just what happens when you're shaving naturally exfoliates quite a lot anyway um so that's really what you need to know about how to keep your tan lasting long and um, keeping fresh and that will stop you from growing patchy and um, because it will stop your tan from growing patchy because if your tan is applied properly it shouldn't be patchy at all and um, it's just if you've taken the precautions before and after to make sure your tan will last long and using all the tips in the video you should be getting at least a week out of your tan potentially longer and um, obviously that depends how often you're showering and things like that obviously if you do loads of exercise you're showering a couple of times a day and that's obviously going to increase your chances of the tan fading faster however all these tips should help prolong your tan as much as possible so if you did enjoy today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Comment if there's any other treatments you want to know more about. Um, I'm thinking I might do a um, sort of advanced facial video, so sort of an advanced nighttime routine. Um, and it may just give you some ideas of different facials I offer here and what facials you can get elsewhere. So if you'd like to see that, then I'll try and give myself a microdermabrasion facial. If you'd like to see that, comment down below and I'll do that for you. But if there's any other treatments you want to know anything more about, then feel free to leave them below um, and I will get back to you. If you like to follow my um account for beauty so if you'd like to follow my um beauty studio account then i'll leave the details here and i'm also super exciting just started a new branch off of that brand so my beauty studio is called Simply Vibrant and I've um, just opened Simply Vibrant events where I'll be offering pamper parties and different sort of party things that you can hire um, sort of in your, if you're in the Essex area then you might want to check that out too. Again, I'll leave that up here. That's just Simply Vibrant events. I'd love for you to give it a little follow, a little shout out because it's my new little baby and I'm super, super excited and I'm just feeling so much better. Um, I was kind of in a bit of a rut and then this kind of idea has been floating around in my head for a while and I thought I'm just gonna go for it and get all the things in motion so when we can open and everything like that then I can start doing pamper parties which I'm so excited about. I'm also thinking if you want a video just on that and how I sort of start up a new brand and things like that then just let me know. Um, but that will be it for today's video. I'm gonna stop rambling on. Subscribe if you're not already and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!